In June 1965, six poor Clare Colatine sisters arrived in Bendigo from Sri Lanka, or Ceylon as it was known then. They arrived with only the most basic necessities to start life here as an enclosed contemplative order, praying daily for humanity and for the people of this region. In 2021, the three remaining aged sisters left Bendigo after 56 years of devotion to the Sandhurst Diocese and to its people. Although every option for their future was considered, there was no option to stay. So Sister Christopher, who is quite frail, relocated to the Poor Clare Bethlehem Monastery in Western Sydney, while Mother Anthony, aged 86, and Sister Claire, aged 65, flew to the other side of the world to the Monastery of Guadalupe in Roswell, New Mexico. Speaking for myself, I suggest that we are not only challenged by our work as archivists, but at times deeply affected. This was the case with the poor Claire. I had known them from afar as a child of the diocese and as a young woman with absolutely no connection to my future role as diocese and archivist, I was given the rare opportunity to enter the monastery and to photograph them. Mother Anthony phoned me one afternoon this year to come and collect the poor Claire photographs, transparencies, letters and other memorabilia from the monastery. I was quite taken aback when she remembered me I presumed that my brief encounter years ago with the camera had been just that. I was truly touched as I left the monastery with a small box under my arm. Was this all there was for the 56 years of prayerful devotion? I contemplated the important role that our diocese living treasures had had and I wanted to do more than just sleeve and archive their material. In anticipation of the inevitable moment of leaving, Mother Anthony had penned their story in her own words. After reading her words, I decided to make a book. Their story had to be one that was theirs, not mine, nor a story created by past and present bishops and clergy, and not by the parishioners, many of whom had cared so well for the sisters over the decades. I fuzzed through the material, lucky enough to have been approved the time to contemplate a story that went way beyond 56 years, and which included political unrest, enormous sacrifice, deep love, and a huge dose of humour. I pieced together their anecdotes, newsletters, correspondence, and particularly those photographs of the huge task they had in turning a 7.5 acre allotment of stony soil to make their self-sufficient home, where they worked entirely for God and for the community. I cannot say enough in three minutes to do justice to the unique legacy of the poor Clares, or to the challenges that I occasionally face in my role as caretaker of so many significant stories. Nevertheless, I take this opportunity to showcase the resulting book, one which gives an insight into the meaningful contribution that the sisters have made.